You're a musician. Some people are great drummers. Some people are great guitarists. Is someone getting the best? The best? Steven Seagal. It's both. And then some people are great musicians and some people are great people. And he's both again. He is the bringer of the thunder. He's on Mount Rockmore. He's probably one of the most influential musicians of the last 20 years. I think nobody would disagree with that. He's an icon. It's obvious these artists can only be talking about one supreme being. Yeah, I can't believe it's me either. Alligator ass. Hoochie coochie man. Talk to my ass. No, these are not the names of amateur porn movies. These are actual songs from a Steven Seagal album, Mojo Priest. What the hell did you just say? Welcome back Seagalians and potential Lord Seagal converts. Today, we're going to cover everything Seagal musically, and at the end of the video, I have an awesome announcement to make that will help revolutionize YouTube and Steven Seagal media. Oh, hell yeah! You see, you don't know this, because the Matrix keeps it from you. Haram! Steven Seagal is a musical genius. Yeah, that's right. A little bit after Seagal became an action star and champion sprinter, but prior to him becoming a respected geographer, I I'm Russian. My family are from Vladivostok and Belarus and, you know, Vladimir Putin. Sensei Steven Seagal was getting panties wet and crushing ass like the god that he is. Sensei Seagal's first album, Songs from the Crystal Cave, was more of a poppy number, followed by Mojo Priest, a return to Seagal's blues background from the 50s. It's important we begin with Seagal's musical history in order to understand the musical genius himself. Before we do that though, it would really help the sunburn I copped last week at the beach if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. That makes no sense. Additionally, it would help spread the word of this little Seagal cult that admirably aims to dominate the world and enforce mandatory cookie Saturdays in honor of our Lord. I love the fuck out of cookies. Now, I thought it only appropriate that as we discuss Seagal's musical brilliance, that we have his dancing magnificence playing in the background, on various speeds just for fun. Awesome music needs awesome dancing. Good call. Good, good call. Born in 1952, Seagal had mastered drums at the age of five, which is quite impressive for an average human, but not our Lord Seagal. Graced with divine abilities, he joined an all-black band between the ages of one to eight years old, where he played guitar. What? Then, after returning from a mission to space at age 10, Seagal decided he wanted to play guitar. And so in the mid 60s, he handcrafted his first guitar. Wait a minute, the fuck? I'm not sure if I'm a complete moron. But you are bled! <laughs> but if he was playing guitar in the all black band at seven years old, how could he have played his first guitar in the mid-60s as a teenager? Either I'm an idiot, or Sensei Seagal is not being truthful. Dare you? How dare you? Let's just move on, shall we? Back in the early 2000s, Steven Seagal was feeling confident for some reason. Self-delusional. And branched out into other creative domains. It's right around this time, Seagal thought it was a genius idea to release an energy drink good to be the king, isn't it? And guess what? This could happen to you if you drink lightning bolt. Which you can also watch here. And also decided it's time to grace the world with his majestic voice and musical mind. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? I'm the most talented musician in the world. His first album to drop was Songs from the Crystal Cave back in 2004. This album doesn't contain any absurd titles but it does have him putting on a reggae style voice in two of the songs, including the infamous Strut. Tagalian subscribers would know this from previous videos. When the girls start to strut, you can look at their butt, you shouldn't do that. The girl dress is just a pity, not just there to cover her kitty. Hey, tell me what you really want, all night. No wonder for none is if I me name. Every time I hear this song, I instantly think of Big Daddy Seagal cutting up the rug on the dance floor and laying in bed having an orgy with 20 women. Haram! 
I managed to find some reviews from the time of release for Songs from the Crystal Cave. Notably, Seagal decided to release the album in the US anonymously and focused on the European and Asian market. I hear the Frenchies really loved it, but they also eat frog legs, so... They're a weird people. In an article from a French newspaper, The Telestar, in July 2004, Seagal discusses how he was a musical prodigy at age 5, playing numerous instruments before being asked to lead the Beatles when he was 12. After turning down those nobodies, Seagal waited until the age of 53 to release his music because he was, well, busy. I want you to take me someplace where I can find some drugs and some women. I splurge on the production budget and hired actors for these next bits. How come you waited to be 53 to release your album then? I was too busy making money with movies. I didn't want to do too many things at one time. But as my mother died, she made me promise to release my songs. Are you giving up movies? No, I love it too much. It's just that today, I feel like I manage both careers at the same time. <laughs> And we are also very thankful that he did not give up making movies. Seagal made 36 movies over the next 15 years, not including his TV series. Comedy was ceased to exist without him. And I was not born on a fucking turnip truck, man. The UFC would not have been formed. Fake low and come high and do that kick that I've been teaching you. And the US Special Forces elite Black Ops Shadow teams would never have been created. Since your fire station main team, I'd say. Yeah and the Clintons wouldn't have a private hit squad. Damn! Your songs witness your Buddhist convictions. Are you going through a mystical phase? I turned to Buddhism by the beginning of the 1970s. I dare to believe it has turned me into a better man. Are you serious? Yeah, his songs are definitely spiritual and Buddhist-like. Yes, I. You see me, I say, my girl, I up. I feel like a more grounded spiritual person already. And I'm like super spiritual, dude. And the Chicago Tribune from 2005. Action star Steven Seagal, known for kicking bad guy backside on film, shows his soft side in his debut CD, Songs from the Crystal Cave. The CD, which has already been released in Europe, features Seagal singing with a strong, understated voice in the realm of Jack Johnson, but with more energy. According to an article in the Los Angeles Times last month, Bought and paid for. Seagal told the Times his mother inspired the disc. My mama died two years ago, and before she did, she said, Son, you got a lot of songs. Put them out. People like them. Why did you say that? Why? So Mama Seagal, may she rest in peace, is the reason why Seagal's music exists in the public domain. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that one there and be respectful. And as for Jack Johnson, you must be so proud you're even mentioned in the same breath as Big Daddy Seagal. Lucky, Lucky son, son of a, of a bitch. bitch. Now, before we get into some of the tracks and brilliant lyrics on both of the albums, I just want to touch on some user reviews of Mojo Priest, his follow-up blues album. Do you think? I got the CD from a Dutch music store, and I find the album really, really great. It's just what I was looking for. I especially like the songs Dark Angel, Love Doctor, Alligator Ass, the song is really funny, and How I Couldn't Forget Hoochie Coochie Man. All the songs are great, but I'm fond of Talk To My Ass and Love Doctor. I've been a blues fan for many years and this is a really good set. For crying out loud people, just buy the dang CD legally. This is Steven's royalties. Guess I'm just old fashioned, but I don't like the idea of ripping him off. Nigga what? Ripping him off? Yeah, because Steven doesn't rip people off at all. That is a pot calling the kettle. Fatty. Having your name as top billing on a movie poster that you're in for a maximum of 10 minutes isn't dishonest. Neither is having your head photoshopped onto someone else's body. Looks exactly the same to me. They are two completely different men. I received my Mojo Priest CD today. Seagal is fantastic as usual. 
I like Crystal Cave the best. He sang slow songs that you could pretend he was singing to you. Nobody wants to hear that. This one is good of course, with the big guy singing. His guitar playing is great. In fairness, his guitar playing is decent from what everyone says, but... To everyone that matters, you're still a loser. From what I have read, most people prefer his first album, Songs of the Crystal Cave. But something tells me these people also eat their own boogers and fight pillows in their living rooms. Now let's put on our N95 masks, giant gloves, and delve deep into the shit that is Seagal's lyrical mind. I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the tits! We start with Girl It's Alright, probably the most easily digestible track on the album. That's not necessarily praise given how low the actual standard is. Ooh, burn. Seagal tries to remain humble with the lyrics but nails it on the head when describing himself. On the song Not For Sale, it sounds like it's directed at somebody who probably sued Papa Seagal at some point. If you think that your transgressions can be settled by money, send me legal letters, impress me with your paper lines and greet paper lawmaker, empty promise maker, Judas mind breaker, straight up man faker. I tried my best to listen to all of this shit with an open mind, but some of the songs are just repetitive and soul draining. Wow, that was painful. On Gory. He tries to hit some notes that Mariah Carey or Celine Dion couldn't nail if they tried. I think everybody needs people around them to just say... This is a bad idea. And of course Strut, one of my favourites. Steven Seagal and his reggae accent are so spot on, I thought I was listening to Bob Marley. When the girls start to strut, you could look at their but you shouldn't do that. The girl dress is just a pity, not just there to cover her kitty. Now moving on to Mojo Priest, he's long awaited. Nobody wants to hear that. Return to blues music. It's only fitting we begin with Alligator Ass, which, as the name suggests, was nominated for a Grammy Award and won. That's not true! In fairness, I heard Alligator Ass does taste a lot like chicken. They call it Chicken of the Swamp. Took me to a restaurant and I had to eat something fast. I ordered me some chicken, they gave me alligator ass. Oh, look at this, look at this! Crunch. In Hoochie Coochie Man, Seagal tells us of the prophecy awaiting his birth as the chosen one. A gypsum woman told my mama before I was born. She said, You're gonna have a boy child coming. He's gonna be a son of a gun. He's gonna make pretty women jump and shout. If anybody's a Hoochie Coochie Man, it's Seagal. Yeah, now you owe me some good pussy. <laughs> and of course, we can't forget about the infamous Talk To My Ass, the original choice of song for the Titanic before Celine Dion stole it. I went to bed last night I tried to give my baby some love Papa, do you want some love? Well, she looked at me kind of surprised And she said, baby, you got your own two bad hands But you ain't got no glove and it's only fitting we finish up on the cracker track, Barbecue, where Seagal openly discusses banging his wife's sister and the babysitter. Pimps and hoes. Cool, cool like 
say that because you're jealous and bitter. I'll remind me because I had your sister. And a babysitter. There's only one conclusion one can draw after watching, or indeed making this video. Seagal is the greatest musical talent of our time. Not only the greatest action star, but also the greatest musical talent. Life just isn't fair. He's got it all! Thanks for watching the video, y'all. Please like and subscribe to this channel, and there will be a new channel popping up soon, dedicated purely to all things Seagal. Just pure footage. We're talking Seagal running. We're talking Seagal sitting. We're talking Seagal's greatest movie lines. We're talking missionary. We're talking missionary. We're talking... We're talking Seagal's greatest fight scenes, which often involves very minimal actual Seagal or fighting. We're talking Seagal's commercials. We're talking Seagal's interviews. All the good shit. Everything Seagal related, nicely compiled in one place. Because one day you'll be looking for a Seagal related clip and my new channel will have it there for you, in one place. You are an honourable man.